Okay, we're going to cover uh, some college football now, top 25 action. Unfortunately, hopefully, the one great thing about these games, Mindy, is that a lot of times for um, – a lot of times for the general betting public, these are the toughest kind of games to handicap where they throw up their arms a little bit, right? Anybody can, you know, or not anybody can handicap, but sometimes in pick em games or close games, it's easier for someone to have a side, feel confident about it. But uh, as I like to say, threading the needle on some of these games with huge spreads and totals that are, in this case, you know, half as much as a spread. That's what makes life, it makes it kind of difficult. So we're going to talk about these teams, including the uh, faltering, floundering Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, are they headed, you know, where are these guys headed? Are they, uh, maybe they should kick them out of the SEC. They're so terrible at this point. Uh, spot to get right here, taking on South Florida. Uh, probably can name the score, but... Uh, what you really can you accomplish on the road, taking 100 kids there, you want to get them all playing time before you go in and play conference play. So uh, can Alabama uh, right the ship here? I don't know when, but what's going to happen? That's funny. Can they right the ship? We're just all worried about Poor Alabama. <laughs> Right. Oh, God, we feel so terrible. Yeah, I mean, uh, do we, I mean, I don't know. Don't we kind of all think uh, they're probably going to, you know, run the next, you know, 10 games probably, Probably right? easy, so they'll get it back, I mean. (laughs) I mean, right. So it's all going to depend on uh, if we think that they can cover the spread. And I I think they have a ton of motivation coming into this game. Um, After everyone has, I guess, has written them off, you know, from the national championship games. Uh, I think they'll definitely be one of the playoff teams. Uh, and I think they kind of, you know, probably win this one by, uh, you know, the 38, 39. So I think they get this one. You got a little bit of a, a touchdown leeway. I think uh, I'll take Alabama to cover the spread here. You got it. You got it about a touchdown off. And well, I think I, maybe I'll call, I'll call, I'll try to be, I'll, maybe I can call it a field goal off, but I still just, I can't get off Alabama here uh, in this, uh, type of spot where it's, I don't know if it's not so much Alabama, right? I mean, maybe they only get six or seven touchdowns, but, uh, you know, can South Florida really even do enough to get involved with the spread? The total would suggest that they would. So maybe South Florida can get, you know, I don't think they can get a third score, but the total's <laughs> pretty high. I, I don't know if I necessarily disagree with the, uh, so maybe it is too low. If Alabama does get to eight touchdowns, I mean, this thing, I would guess, would end up going over. So I don't know if there's a lot of handicap I can do necessarily here with it, like people might be looking for, but uh, I'm not worried about, uh, you know, what happened in Texas. I might even jump the gun. I mean, when I said Texas, I mean, I was talking about my own. I know they're not number one. Uh, I was going off some uh, – a text that someone had sent me and I kind of, but I don't know. I mean, many you seem to agree. Maybe Texas is number one right now, not number four or not number seven, whatever. I mean, to me, it felt like that was something special. So I think we should still give Alabama some credit there um, despite that game. So the Bulls, they can't play any defense on, on <laughs> Alabama, no matter how left behind their offense is. Uh, they don't have the quarterbacks. That's all probably right now. Maybe that, maybe they don't want to go to Tuscaloosa anymore. Uh, now that all these other schools are coming into these other conferences, and there are other options, and Saban's seventy-one years old. <laughs> I shouldn't make fun of that. Uh-oh. Let's, Mindy. I'm going to take Alabama with you to roll all right. here, and uh, I, I think her thirty-five is probably a safe place to be. And if you've got them even a touchdown better than that, this line was as low as 29 and a half and uh, was actually as high as 30. The opener was 35 when we did the show on Saturday. And mm. uh, the money did come in on South Florida first, uh, first move there. And again, I, I wouldn't think, I, again, you want to play a lot of kids in your games before you get into conference play. This is a game. This is usually the game you do it. This is the most 
one of the things that not is is not talked about as much who you're playing the players you're playing when you're huge favorites right they can roll don't worry Oklahoma here is in a similar situation. They're not Alabama. They are. they are Oklahoma. Minus 28 here on the road. And the total here is 60, taking on Tulsa. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, one of these that, you know, I'm not a total, uh, you know, fan of these uh, uh, coaching staffs, right? I think Oklahoma Sooners, uh, I always think they're a good team, but I think they're coaching uh, lets them down. And then you could say that the Tulsa Golden Hurricanes have like the worst coaching staff here uh, in the nation. So how in the heck are they going to stay up with uh, this Oklahoma team? Again, I have this one, uh, Oklahoma rated out at about, uh, you know, 32. It's a little bit closer than what I have Alabama. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Oklahoma's already put up, uh, what, 70? They're averaging 50 points a game here uh, easily. I think they get this one today or, or on Saturday there, Ramon. Oh, I'm taking a call. Now, they did get the money last week covering that game against SMU. They got a couple of touchdowns. Like They were interested in covering. It felt like, uh, <laughs> you know, they're against SMU. You know, two touchdowns in the final nine minutes made it kind of interesting. So, uh, Tulsa covered by a half a point. even Whoa, though they- half the money by a half. <laughs> they were outgained by 250 yards. Uh, so the line definitely, I mean, it opened as low as Circa opened at 23. I mean, was 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 Circa thinking the action wasn't going to come in? He immediately was bet up to 26 and a half. I, I'm going to actually respect the bookmaker a little bit. I'm not going to lay the tax here with you at what it looks like to me sure. uh, off of a, you know, like I say about the Circa openers now, their limits are actually quite uh, high. Uh, they try to make sure they set a good line. So, I didn't know that uh, they were bringing in the opinions there. Sorry about that in the chat. I'm so used to, oh, no, they were talking about other stuff. No one has any opinions on football yet. Frankie <laughs> does like the under here in this one. Mike's worried about the pandemic. No, the great thing is we have some great scientists came up. Let me tell you, Mindy, there's a medicine that people take. Yeah, I feel for about three days, it starts working and they stop taking the medicine. They feel pretty bad. And then all of a sudden they start to get better. So we're all, I think we figured it out. Been through it. <laughs> people, people with, uh, you know, if you got any kind of uh, breathing issues or, you know, try to be a little safer than, you know, younger people, older people, uh, Immuno, immunocompromised. Okay. Anyways, Mindy, I too many for me. Uh, I'm gonna. I like under here. I, I totally missed the boat on this. Open 63 and a half down to 60, making a free play here on the show. I'm gonna end up on the under in this one with Tulsa and Oklahoma. And Mindy takes Oklahoma. Hope Tulsa can. Hope Tulsa doesn't score. That I mean, that they're, that's where the issue. Not. They might not. <laughs> Going to lie here, I would think. Western Kentucky going up against Ohio State and another four touchdown favorite here. The Bucks at home against the Hilltoppers. <laughs> Total here sixty four. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those. I kind of feel like a, a little bit of a broken record here. Uh, Ohio State, I have them uh, winning by 29, so it's close, but I'm going to go ahead and take them here. Again, it's Ohio State. Are we worried about their offense? Only averaging 29 points a game. Are we really worried, though? I mean, I don't think so. I think it's just one of these that uh, some of these teams kind of stand, tend to start a little bit slow. They got a couple games under their belt now. Um, Western Kentucky has been able to put up some points. Uh, they're averaging about 46 uh, but I think it's going to be, again, a case of too big, too strong there on the line. Uh, give me Ohio State here to roll. I'm perplexed a little bit. I think Ohio State rolls here. I think they can get the four touchdown win. I think they can probably win by a little bit more. And I think that that feels like the safer side to me. It, the steam has come in on Ohio State. It opened 26. It did tick as high as 28. You might not even it, – it's such a – number that stands out like a sword though you might actually try to get off 28 and get it just down if you're we'd be worried like i am i'm going to trust mindy here and 
uh, take Ohio State with her in this one. Look, they, they have not looked like C.J. Stroud, Ohio State, but, I mean, were they really expecting that at this point? McCord, uh, three touchdowns so far, but they're at home against – well, Western Kentucky, they kind of look like in Western Kentucky because they have a quarterback, certainly right now with Reed, uh, four touchdowns last week. But you have to think that the Bucks, you know, I talk about getting one of all those players in, but I think uh, Ohio State also wants to have a big, big time uh, in the shoe here with a beatable opponent that they should be able to beat down. Let's see here what we got from the chat in this one and it looks like dj big boy who he's saying uh, ryan day you, you pressure's on right so you better take advantage I, of these situations here still the i think number two coach and all of uh i don't think we're too worried about him uh you know he needs a big win yeah, I'd say uh, it looks like thomas is saying go under here that's Kind of the way I'm looking here in this one as well. I think uh, under, you know, maybe they can slow down Western Kentucky. But Reed, 27 of 33 last week. And just uh, also, you know, concern that uh, Ohio State uh, not covering necessarily and only have, what, uh, 58 points or so. Right. I'll take them here with you. I'll lay 28 points with the Bucks. Well, <laughs> Here comes more Pac-12 action with the uh, – I say Pac-12 team. I mean, they're on a roll still, and now they're favored on the road. Look, this is going to be a little bit of a difficult situation. Michigan State, we know the coach has been suspended. I don't want to, you know, get into that. That's – we – it was – the story was breaking as we were on the show uh, over the weekend. But I don't know – All I, all I can say about the uh, – situation with Tucker is I don't know how you have non-consensual phone sex, but let's talk about the game. Washington <laughs> is a 16 and a half. Hello. Goodbye. Click. Uh, six, Washington 16 and a half. And the total. I'm sure, it's, I, I'm sure it was being recorded, Ramon. So we could probably find out. Oh, we, we, Maury, oh okay. More is yet to come possibly in the uh, Michigan. Well, wouldn't you think? Well, wouldn't you think? talk about how sad it is uh, in what truly, you know, all kidding aside about uh, some of the woes of Michigan State, and it seems to be in a dark spot. Anyways, I I imagine this is affecting the spread a little bit because uh, Washington opened as low as 13. It's now 16 and a half, which is suspended. Still going to get out there and play this game. I mean, uh, uh, here with Washington on the road. Uh, double digit, uh, you know, two touchdown favorite, Pac-12. Smell they're the ones that are smelling like roses, and uh, especially going up against a big big ten team here. Well, I mean, I you know, I'm probably going to be under the impression that uh, you know, uh, Penix is definitely the best quarterback out there playing right Whoa. now. My, my opinion, I think he's great. Uh, but I do kind of feel like this Washington Huskies team has a little bit of trouble covering spreads. They don't tend to put people away. I don't know what it is, uh, but they have a hard time uh, putting folks away. And I think Michigan State at home, a little bit, little bit of you know something to prove here. I'm going to take Michigan State at home in in those big points. I don't think Washington gets this one uh, by two touchdowns for as great as I think this re um, this quarterback and receiving core is. But um, Michigan State, I think, gets the points here. I got yeah, winning. I mean, Washington winning by like what touchdown, something like that. Okay, no, I, I, I want to agree. Uh, you think it? You're saying Michigan? You're, you're I'm saying Michigan State? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I, no, because Kim has been good. The numbers are great. It's just the comparing the schedule a little bit, right? I mean, uh, Boise and Tulsa, Tulsa, but Boise's okay, right? Uh, we know they have some, but uh, so Penix has faced those two teams, and uh, Kim has faced Central Michigan and Richmond. So uh, Penix, <laughs> uh, you know, 850 yards so far, eight touchdowns, one pick, but Kim, 571 yards with five touchdowns, and uh, no picks as well. The total, this looks to reek of a shootout. So maybe I have to. Re 
respect what the sharps are saying about this. It opened 62 and a half. It's now down to 57 and a half. The, you know, these teams would look to be, you know, very proficient at throwing. Um, so not sure about this move actually on the total, but I'm going to respect it, but I'm going to, I'll take, uh, I'm going to take Michigan state here with you in this one, Mindy, Thomas Lewis is going to lay it with Washington. And Frankie Diamond says he wants to go over in this one. Certainly that's, a, you know, you're getting the best price, I would think, at this one. And uh, DJ Big Boss, Michigan State looks good so far. This could be a spot they get exposed. Look, these we know what this Pac-12 is doing right now to all these teams, but feels like playing just a, maybe just a tad too many on the road here. And I respect this move to the under. Maybe we're looking at something that could end up being a lower scoring game after all. But uh, Mindy and Penix, uh, look, uh, the, the trophy goes to a quarterback a lot. Yeah. So, right. Uh, you know, that that right. is interesting that you uh, say that and you you like him so. And again, I mean, he could put up these big numbers. Let's take Michigan State. See what happens. I think Michigan State might have enough defense just to slow them down enough. They'll get the money, and I think the move on the total is right. Whether or not I'm getting the best price, I don't know if it's going to matter. I think I'm still going to end up – I better do it. I better wait. I don't know. Could it go back up? Could general public push this total back up for me because of the perception? Don't they know about Michigan State? We know about Michigan State. They know about Washington, but they are – putting up a very good offense uh, even against bad comp you know poor competition so all right well we got to wait till all the information's out but uh you know if your coach is suspended it's not great but <laughs> i'm down man you know i don't want to hear the same offensive coordinator right all right, all right. yeah let's uh, let's <laughs> there's still you know everyone but one per well i don't want to say it like that but the coach is affected Everyone else is doing their job. You know, everyone else, kids are going to class, they're coming to practice, they've got coaches, we know all that. It just sucks, man. Michigan State, clean it up. All right, we got a good one here, at least, Mindy, with the game game of the weekend, I would guess. Right, it kind of feels like it. Tennessee and Florida here. I've got showing Tennessee down to a a six-and-a-half point favorite at some spots this morning, and the total has dipped just a tad to 58 and a half here. Uh, oh, we got some. This is a, some SEC uh, football. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, right. Uh, Tennessee struggled, though, what, against like Austin P, that sort of thing. It's going to be interesting to okay. see how this goes. But it's also one of those like weather, I think, really affected uh, them last game out as well. I have this one. Uh, basically a virtual uh, tie, right? And that would be a tie oh. as to who is actually going to win outright. So oh. if I'm getting seven, I'm taking the Gators here at home. It's hard to play in the swamp. We all kind of know that. Uh, you got right now, um, it's, it's not like Florida is too far off statistically. Uh, each of these uh, two are only allowing like single digits to their opponents thus far. So is there a little bit more defense than what we're expecting? Uh, I kind of think so. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take Florida here, though. Um, getting the looks like six and a half now. I'd rather have that seven. You can get seven. I, All right, I'll I, take I seven. know what you're picking. I just was looking at a popular online book <laughs> and I entered in seven. And now it's six and eight. But here's the thing. I mean, it. We've seen this kind of this spread kind of run the gamut already all over the place. I mean, I saw an, I saw a number as low as four, but I think generally it's been seven. It's been six and a half. Saw it go all the way up to nine and a half at one spot. Let me see where that was. Where was that? Where was that book at? Was that a real? Was that a was that an author? Was that an authorized uh, licensed sports book in the right. United States? Well, anyway, I mean, we got to figure this game's be oh, kind of closer than that uh, necessarily. No, my lean was uh, certainly I've got to, I've got it closer to the spread. Maybe I'm less decisive here, but at least a home dog here with Florida, you're going to be on it. I'm just going to exercise maybe a little bit of caution. I mean, last year was so exciting with the. Uh, that was Hooker and Richardson, and uh, 
I don't know. Everybody can laugh. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, look, we were on it with Richardson. I mean, look, uh, I gave the rookie quarterbacks of the NFL. I know we're going to talk NFL tomorrow. Uh, I gave them all, you know, all of them passing grade. It's very, very difficult to go in and do anything right. as a rookie quarterback. Richardson uh, passed with flying colors, obviously. But Still look, turned the ball over too much. My no, man, it's it's gonna happen, but you look at the quarterbacks right now that they're trying to make into NFL. And I get it, you know, especially the ones that are running these – you know, super air raid shooting pat offenses, right? But it's tough to go get a Josh. Not, I'm making fun of Josh Allen too with the 80 turnovers, but I'm talking about a six foot four guy that can throw the ball. That uh, you know, you coach these guys up, right? You take your chances with physical specimens, and you know, the other guys are kind of hit and miss. Anyways, that was Hooker and. Last year with Hooker, it looked like we were dealing last year with Hooker and Richardson, and that game was just on point last season. But the balls have a lot to return. There's still Tennessee, you know, moving up and forward over the last few years here. Uh, usually Florida as a dog is pretty, pretty decent. It doesn't happen, you know, as often as you might think. So maybe it is where the shot is getting a touchdown uh, here in this one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go under <laughs> okay. 58 and a half. Yeah, and then, yeah, well, I might. I could join you still. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't think the spread's gonna move too much off of this. If it's seven, that's fine. Maybe it'll be just a seven. Let's see here if anybody's interested in this. I would think there'd be some interest here. We know that you guys are. You know, make your plays on Saturday. He'll take Thomas Lewis. Will take Tennessee here. Now, who banging says lines tight. Napier's tough. And Perky wants to talk about Mel Tucker. You can Google it, Perky. It's all over the place. But um, yeah, it's uh, it was. It's not Washington's coach. It's Michigan State. Coach. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, let me get. Let me make that clear. Um, Don James would never stand for that in Washington. <laughs> Bowling Green is at Michigan. <laughs> Bowling Green is at Michigan here. Here it is, Minnie. These are the ones. I promise you, these are the games that I specialize in. The thread the needle. I special Side in total. The line is 40. The total is 53. I'm gonna give you the I'm gonna give you both the side and the total, maybe. <laughs> Oh goodness, goodness! Uh, Forty, man. I think that's a that's a bunch. But I have a a family friend that plays for for Bowling Green. It's uh, you know his uh, nephew. My favorite so. team from last year. Don't forget. Yeah, he transferred from uh, Iowa State. Went to Bowling Green. Uh, he's a starter now. It's kind of why he went there. Uh, so it's kind of fun to watch. Been kind of trailing them a little bit. Uh, they've been averaging. Uh, 31 points a game, 418 yards of offense. I don't think they're anything to, to sneeze at here. I know they didn't look uh, exactly great. Uh, they got a loss under their belt. Um, Michigan, we know they're always going to be good, but I think this is a game where uh, we, we might rest uh, some folks at the end of the game. And I don't feel like they're like Alabama, right, where you have that tier two, uh, the second teamers come in where they really don't fall off much. I'm going to go ahead and take Bowling Green. I think 40 is just too many in this game. I have, you know, Michigan probably in the 30s. Uh, but, yeah, I like Bowling Green in this one. Yeah, we kind of made fun of Harbaugh a little bit saying, oh, you know, uh, uh, he doesn't run up. But he, sometimes he does, actually. But, oh, man, 40 here uh, in this situation. So, and I, you know, don't mean to make it about Harbaugh and the coaching, you know, his – his deal there, I'm not worried about that as necessarily uh, I am about the program here, but uh, I'm gonna I'll give I'll give out the over uh, certainly in this one. I gotta think that you know I'm gonna need Bowling Green's help here. Probably gonna need two scores out of them. Uh, obviously gonna need two scores out of them here. So you said Michigan to roll though. Uh, no, I like well, Bowling Green. You said that. Uh, I, I, I think Michigan probably wins by uh, 30. Again, yeah, I feel like, no, I you know, heard, yeah, you said. My, I mean, my thing is, is um, like, you know, I like Harbaugh, but he's one of those, like, uh, he's not the best recruiter, right? So I kind of feel like 
uh, they have their starting core and then their tier two, these second stringers that aren't as good, like Alabama. They're great recruiters. They have all of this talent. I kind of feel like when they get some of their starters out, they still have, uh, you know, the second core that comes in and can be about as good. So I kind of feel like, you know, we're going to be up big. We're going to rest some starters. We don't want to get anyone hurt. Uh, and I feel like that gives Bowling Green some chances. And again, it kind of fits into your scenario uh, there as well. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm definitely all about that. You know, these are the these are the games where they play. Um, you know, you play your guys at these. You got to get these guys in. This and this again. One other point that I made about you know covering these spreads and also in some instances overcoming that uh, missed plays because of the clock. The new rules there is the fact that. Uh, Big teams are going to be looking to get their players more into a game now because, or get more plays in their in their game even late when they're up ahead because they're missing out on those you know five plays per game and there's only you know twelve and thirteen games in college football so you've got to you know maximize those plays so you may actually have one extra drive from well, not necessarily the starters, but they're still trying to play the game necessarily, right, and get some uh, uh, experience in there. So no Harbaugh uh, and his suspension. But, uh, again, this is one you can just dial it in. and uh, Yeah, I think he comes back versus Nebraska, right? Name the school. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> can't, wait. can't wait for that. Gee. Oh, yeah, me either. All right, Thomas Lewis says it's 60 to nothing, Michigan. Okay, I'll take over then. I'll take over. Mindy's on Bowling Green, Georgia Tech against Ole Miss. In this one, we've got Ole Miss favored here, uh, minus 18 and a half and 63. Um, yeah, I, I, I like both sides. Um, I'm kind of unsure which way I really want to go. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and take uh, Ole Miss here in this one. Uh, they promised to run the ball a lot more, to be a more physical team uh, this year. I feel like Georgia Tech uh, makes just too many miscues. I think they're missing their leading wide receiver here this game also. Uh, so I'm going to take uh, Ole Miss here to win this one. I have them actually winning by about, I don't know, 27. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. I, know, I know. It sounds like a, a a lot. So sometimes when I have that huge of variance, I don't know if it's just one of those, like, you know, maybe my estimates, maybe my numbers are off a little bit. It's It worries me uh, just because there's not so much information here um, when we're trying to decide with these spreads. But uh, again, I think it's going to be uh, a big running game. I think they wear them down. Oh, yeah. I think they just roll. I'm going to take well, uh, Ole Miss. Tech can run too. Uh, you know, I know Ole Miss is going to have some edges there, certainly, but Tech has been doing a nice job, and they've got a quarterback doing a nice job so far. Look, I've, got, I've missed out, Mindy. The, I love the over in this game. It's gone all the way up to 63. It opened 59 and a half. Somewhere it opened 55 and a half. I guess I'm living in the wrong state or the wrong country. Or the wrong, and but it's all the way up to 63, and I still think it can get over 63 here. I'm going to end up on the over in this game. I think uh, Georgia Tech does have uh, a lot of uh, ability. I think they have improved ability on offense. They had, you know, they were playing South Carolina State, but they rushed for 268 yards, and King has done a nice job at quarterback. He's seven touchdowns, one interception. Yeah, the games have been easier. Certainly he was four touchdowns last week. So I think Old Miss was able to take, you know, Pratt left that game. That was a big, big deal, uh, certainly in that one. And uh, uh, who's up next for Old Miss, uh, Alabama? Oh, well, they, they, don't, they don't look ahead to Alabama because everybody knows Alabama sucks. So right. I don't think they mean they're they terrible. They don't know they play. Uh, Ole Miss doesn't even know they play Alabama next, so I don't think I'm going to – all go right. on Mississippi in this look. They're looking head. forward, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll go over. Might not take care one. of us. Yeah, maybe a look ahead. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking tech stays in. I upset alert, maybe. I don't know. Okay. All right. Oh, we might have a few comments here on this one. Let's see. Uh, Thomas Lewis concerned about uh, the tech injuries. 
So, all right. Uh, let's see. Thomas is on Mississippi here. Oh, Miss. Let's go. Let's roll. Okay. Let's go, Rebels. Go, Rebs. <laughs> probably have to change their nip and probably have to change their nickname or something. That's right. That's right. The matchup between. Oh, Mindy. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> oh, it's. Wyoming, hey, Wyoming, watch out, Texas. We know Wyoming can, they can shock you. And <laughs> uh, maybe Texas might be my number one team right now, but we already know that Wyoming has a, you know, a good performance. Hey, uh, here, Texas minus 28 and a half and the total 49. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like the Cowboys. I always root for them. They had a nice game versus, uh, you know, Texas Tech that they won there in double overtime. Uh, they've been averaging, you know, 30 points a game or so, but they allow is still uh, close to 25 points a game and close to 500 yards on uh, defense. So I'm going to go ahead and take Texas. Again, I feel like they can go ahead and roll here, especially at home. It's one of these, like, once momentum gets going against the Cowboys, I think it's going to be a rough outing for them. So, taking All Texas. Right. I've got to take Texas because I'm touting them as my number one team right now. And I respect the teams that are ahead of them, but uh, I don't think I don't think, I don't think yours is uh, better than Penix, but you know what? If Texas has the season, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, anyway. it's going to be interesting to see how he does the rest of the way out. You know, he looked good that game. Oh, no, I have concerns because Baylor next for Texas. So I, I think there's, you know, look ahead spot here. But maybe they won't be. Maybe they can, you know, be focused here. Uh, I don't think Texas is I, – they, I don't think they've turned the ball over yet. So uh, no, that's – yeah, yeah. Wyoming had a rough time against uh, Portland State. They barely had more yardage than Portland State. And we saw um, what happened to uh, Portland State versus Oregon. Whoops. Oh, yeah. Texas, zero turnovers. Wyoming, four. Okay. There you go. Okay. Good job. All right. Good job. All right. So look at that. Look at all that info you know about. Texas. Well, no, I'm, gonna, I'm, taking, I'm taking Texas. Uh, I think I'm, I'm – Taking Texas, even though the, my computer does say, you know, watch out, this is probably a four touchdown look ahead spot. Wyoming did take the reported steam from the Sharps. At least that keeps it down here. Uh, be careful that hook. You know, people say, oh, you know, don't buy, don't buy the, you know, you buy the I hook. Do every time. Time. I do every time. Look, every time. I'm not going to buy the, I'm not buying a hook on 26 and a half, but you're darn sure I'm buying a hook on 28. <laughs> All right, we'll give you a full point, right? Uh, right. You know, 30, 39, I could care less. 41 and 42 and a half, prob probably going to even buy out there if I'm playing it that way. Key number. Even though college, anything can happen. We know with goofy scores, you know, in college. But uh, still, they land on certain numbers. That's something that, uh, you know, analysts will tell you time and time again. All right. Is Texas the new Alabama? Right. We've waited and waited and waited. And I've never drunk. I've never consumed the Texas Kool-Aid. In fact, I have been one to reject any advance, you know, any Texas advance. And now I, I'm, I'm finally on the horns. I'm on the horns right now. Uh, in this that game I mean, for the season, I mean, a you know, Years past, oh, Texas is back. No, I'm saying no, they're not. Now, this version, in this season, in this format, and I talk, you know, talking about the way things are developing, more teams are going to be winning national championships again. I, dynasties are, are over. Sorry, Lou. Hawaii and Oregon here, Mindy. Uh, okay, I get, oh, boy, I, you know. Uh, <laughs> The miracle cover, everyone wants to talk about it uh, last week with the 45-yard interception return to get crazy. the money and bad beat of the week. You know, the Scott Van Pelt bad beat right. of the week. It was. <laughs> Go ahead. It was uh, the bad beat of the week. But how amazing was that for, <laughs> you know, it was kind of funny because we were talking about it here just at the house. I was like, 
Yeah, the only thing that could <laughs> uh, uh, mess this one up is a pick six. And then I was like, oh, but they'd probably just fall on it, you know? And they're like, no, they'll just run it in. I'm like, oh, okay. And it happened. It was pretty wild watching it in real time. It was almost unbelievable because Texas Tech had uh, been covering that spread the whole game. Uh, but I don't remember um, who Stanford played last week. Was it USC or was it UCLA? Oh, gosh. Was it Stanford last week. Uh, but anyway, oh, Stanford, well. you know, kind of crushed Hawaii, right? And then Stanford gets totally crushed. And then they come up against an Oregon team averaging 600 yards of offense per game. No chance for the Rainbow Warriors here. Um, Oregon probably wins this one by 60. I'll take them. All right, Mindy, I get it. Uh, we'll just try. I want to make sure I got it right. It was uh, 56 to 10 in that game, Stanford at USC. And the total was 69 and a half, and it went under. Hmm. Uh, Mindy, uh, maybe just one. I mean, you've never heard of Timmy Chang. I mean, come on, I'm getting. I've 30, heard of him. Okay, I'm getting 38 points with my, my, my guy. To, well, I'll probably just look at the total here then. Uh, and look, this one I get feels too high. I'm probably gonna be with the the reported steam came on the over, so I guess I'm not, you know, with the even with the sharps here. Maybe it was it what is it gonna what did, did you quote us? What did you say 60 to nothing, or was that Thomas? Yeah, or? I said I said they probably win by 60. I haven't win in my by you know, um, 40. <laughs> I just said 60 to be funny. All right, well, I want to think that you know. Look, Hawaii's never going to be back, but at least they have Timmy Chang. That's uh, this game would, you know, I, he. It just feels like he could get something together offensively, even against an Oregon team that you know likes to gloat when they win eight games, eighty-one to nothing. It's a great day to be a duck. So. Right. They're, they're, Hawaii's given up thirty-five points, you know, every game. It seems like. They have covered eight of their last 10 dating back to last season. It would seem like Timmy Chang could design up enough here. But if he, you know, if you say that there's no chance, I'll go under. It might be against my better judgment. I don't think Hawaii has any defense. They're giving up over 35 a game. Maybe it'll be, you know, 40, 49 to 14. Does that get me, does that get me home? I guess it does. 49 to 14. It's going to get everything home here. Oregon and Hawaii. Not much else. I, I don't know how else I can analyze this one. I just, I just want to, I, I hope that because uh, the, you know, the underdogs cover in ducks games. There's no, there's no doubt, but man, uh, Hawaii used to play some incredible games where the score would be like 56 to 49. They'd be playing big, Big time teams out on the island at two in the morning and uh, miracle games. You can you can find them on YouTube. Miracle Hawaii games. games. All right, I'll I do remember three. some Hawaii miracle games. Yeah, at home on that tur You know they play now at basically a high. They built a little stadium. They don't play in the concrete jungle anymore, but uh, that was a place where you could work some magic. See, we got some comments here on this game. Probably not. Okay. Oh, Thomas going under with me. And again, if it, uh, if it goes over, then it's going to be that Hawaii. You know, it's going to, I don't think it's going to be 72 to 7 or anything. Save the best for last. That's here, right. I think in this one, this will be the. I think the last one, I don't know, maybe you'll come up with a few of these last, or yeah, these are our top 25 covers. That's what it is. So. Top okay. 25 coverage, yep. Got it. Colorado here against Colorado State. Uh, that, this makes it all that much more interesting, even though Colorado, we expect to be a big favorite now. Asterisks all over the place, uh, I would think, in this one. There's no reason. I mean, Colorado State doesn't have a fervent, fan following that's going to, you know, travel in there to Boulder and make this, this is still going to be a, you know, gold, black and gold show, but there is the name Colorado in both teams. And I guess that's got to amount to something. 
Yeah. So Ramon, you were on these uh, Buffaloes two two times here so far in the first two games. And why was uh, uh, why were the Rams on by last week? I thought that was pretty odd to start the season with a, a bye, the only team on bye. Uh, but does that help you heal up a little bit after the first game or does it give you the disadvantage for uh, not playing in another one? I don't know um, how I feel about that. Um, so I kind of gave uh, Nebraska a chance, right, versus Colorado. I kind of felt like when Colorado played TCU, it was kind of a lack of competitiveness with TCU. I mean, a, a team that has, I don't know, only um, 11 players from last season. They have like a 90-man roster of all new guys. So I kind of felt like uh, Colorado was being a little bit overvalued. Uh, when they come up against Nebraska, I kind of felt like that. And again, it was Nebraska with their six turnovers that just made that game kind of unwatchable, but hung in there for um, you know, good, you know, two and a, I don't know, uh, 2.25 quarters. I don't know how it works, but um, I see Colorado winning this one. I think they win it handily. I don't think they win this one by four touchdowns. I think that's a little bit too much uh, for them to ask. It's still, especially when they're not really running the ball. Um, I know they're going to have to just count on just, you know, passing that way. And it looks like if you could put pressure on Shadir, uh, he can run into a little bit of trouble too. Uh, I have Colorado winning this one by about 14. I don't have them winning by uh, 23. I'm going to go ahead and take Colorado State um, and see how this uh, turns out. The only thing that worries me is Colorado State gives up the 550 yards of offense, and that's what Colorado puts up. Um, so I don't know how it's going to come down, but I still am kind of uh, a little bit leery on this Colorado team. Haven't totally bought in until maybe they can get a running team, a, ru a running game going a little bit more. You're going to see it this week for sure with Colorado because they'll have advantages all over the field against Colorado State. Uh, yeah, I'm ahead of the curve on Colorado, and now uh, are there are still non-believers, and no, they're not a national championship caliber team. I mean, look, I think even the polls probably have them too high, but uh, you can go in and cover your first two games by 43 points, leave the metrics. You know, I respect all of you folks. Uh, they're doing your jobs with the metrics. And uh, look, I mean, I'm sure that Colorado, I'm sure no team has had a greater adjustment in your ratings than Colorado. So, uh, you know, the, you know, they're going to continue to catch up. But if they get covers, if they don't, then, you know, you'll be actually ahead. Uh, <laughs> again, I thought that I really thought there were more Dion detractors. Uh, I thought I was actually, I, I didn't know that I was in the majority of folks. I, is it the media itself? I thought people were not expecting Colorado, and I thought I was a contrarian to be, and I wasn't doing it to be contrarian. I think I understand the landscape, and I'm not always caught up in the numbers. So Yeah, uh, I think we'll find out a lot about Colorado next week, right? Oh, for sure. And I'm not yeah. exactly thrilled with the position, but when, uh, look, uh, when you have – so I'm talking about with the posturing a little bit of Colorado and uh, even Sanders calling out rule. I mean, uh, is there really a place for that? But you only get one chance in, well, I don't want to say one chance in life. You get one one chance in the moment. You get the, So why not seize the opportunity to leave and build a, a legacy? I mean, uh, you know, Dion could leave the campus tomorrow and Colorado could probably pick up the pieces a little bit and still su sustain and survive for a few years as a decent football team just from pieces that might be left in place and things like that. So he's brought all that. We don't need, you know, you could find this on any uh, channel. So I'm going to go over because what you said, I mean, uh, how can Colorado stop, Colorado State stop these guys? And if Colorado does have such vulnerabilities defensively, which they might not have in a game against Colorado State. But yeah, maybe they're still a little bit overrated. So Colorado State, maybe they maybe three touchdowns would be in three touchdowns and it's over. Three to, I would think. No, you know, you're calling for just a two touchdown game. So it wouldn't be uh, there. But again, I'm obviously closer to the spread on uh, Colorado here. In fact, I do have them uh, open as open 19, bet up to 23, was as low as 18. Uh, we're definitely getting to the, 
a little bit of a tough zone right there when they're starting yeah. about 24 points. I mean, I'm <laughs> probably going to be on Colorado somehow here in this one, but uh, not comfortable in giving it out as a play probably to the public at 24 points. So I'll take over, though, for sure at 60 and a half. Open 58 and a half, now 60 and a half. I've got maybe 70 points here. I think Colorado puts up big numbers. Again, you're not going up against the black shirt. You're going up against <laughs> – uh, the Mountain West here, <laughs> Colorado, Colorado State, uh, 903 passing yards for Sanders so far with 78% completions. And that includes the game against the Blackshirts, who did a good job in that game. It was a good game. And uh, I think Nebraska can even be thinking that uh, things were looking it, – you know, it sucked. They, they probably – pretty mad but uh yeah again i'm you know been very critical i feel I think like all it showed in that game is that uh if you can pressure him you'll have a chance against colorado oh, yeah. they'll have nebraska will have success with the likes of you know look at the minnesota game right i mean that was a tough game it wasn't pretty but uh yeah. against a similar team you're gonna get a lot <laughs> of when Nebraska goes up against uh, any of those, te- with you know, I didn't look at the schedule, but I'll just any of those type of ilk of the Big Ten, not the big, not maybe not the mid, but in that middle tier, all the games going to be like two or th- you know, seventeen to fourteen. Uh, all right, 18. they're all right. going to be right there. I know everyone's looking for uh, you know Jeff Sims and Satterfield to all uh, ditch Lincoln all at the same time right now. Yeah, it's not gonna be, we're going to be having some rough, uh, rough times here come uh, October, Big Ten country with uh, some low scoring game. Don't worry, we'll be on the under. What it is, right? All right. 